Hey, this is Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today, I'm going to show you how to replace your shock linkage bearings. Checking for play in your bearings should be a part of your regular maintenance routine. Unfortunately, this is something that's often overlooked, but is really easy to do. Now these bearings wear out over time, so if you're to that point, we'll show you how to take care of them. Today we'll be focusing on the shock linkage bearings, but we have a how-to video for pretty much any bearing on your bike. So be sure to check that out. And I wanna point out, we're working on a 2005 CRF 450R, but this procedure will be similar for a lot of 250 and 450 models from Honda. To do this job, you'll need some basic hand tools, rags, and safety glasses. We also have some contact cleaner and some grease that we'll be using with our Motion Pro suspension bearing service tool. The parts we'll be using is a linkage rebuild kit from Pivot Works. Always refer to your model specific service manual for more information, proper procedures, and specs. To check for play in your shock linkage, you'll wanna still have it on the bike. And what you'll do is put your bike on the center stand, pull up on the rear swing arm, and feel for any play in these bearings. Now, it can be helpful to have somebody else with you looking at the pivots and you can see exactly which ones are worn out. Now we're doing everything as a kit, so we'll re be replacing all of these bearings. Now we've already got our linkage on the bench because this linkage came off a bike we're using for our Roach to Racing series on YouTube, where we take a bike that's completely destroyed, tear it down to the frame, replace all the worn parts, and then we'll go race it. So be sure to check that out. And if you need help taking your linkage off the bike, refer to your service manual. With our linkage on the bench, we'll clean up the parts as best as possible before we start, and then we'll remove the side collars and seals from the linkage. As you take everything apart, make sure you lay it out in order. So this pivot collar is actually seized in here, so we'll worry about that a little later. You can use a small pry bar to remove the collars, or if you have to, you can use a screwdriver. The collars on the lower shock bearing are not coming out, so we're gonna go ahead and use a punch from the other side and punch it out. So we'll go ahead and put this in the vise with soft jaws. That way we don't damage anything. And we'll take this punch and catch it on that, the edge of this collar from the back side, and we'll hit it out. Now we'll do the same thing for the other side. As you can see, these bearings were long overdue for service and completely dry and rusty. Dust seals? More like rust seals. <laughs> now this one was a little bit difficult to remove our pivot collar. And if it is and doesn't want to come out, you can also use some penetrating oil on there and let that soak in to help free it up. That's exactly what we'll be doing on the shock arm. So to get these bearings out, we do need to get these pivot collars removed. And to do that, we'll use a drift and a hammer and punch them out. And then we can use our Motion Pro tool to remove the bearings. Normally you would remove all these needle bearings at this time, but some of these are kind of stuck in there and we'll just let them come out as we pull them out. First, I'll show you how to remove this lower shock bearing with the socket and vice method. And then we'll show on these other two bearings how to use the Motion Pro tool. So we found a socket that's the same size as the outside diameter of the bearing. And then we found a socket with an inside diameter that's bigger than the outside diameter of the bearing. Now we'll put both of those together with our part. We'll put it in the vise, pull it together. And when you pull it together, the bearing will push out of the shock arm. To make this easier, we can apply some heat to the shock arm and that will help the bearing come out. If you are using heat on these parts to help remove them, Make sure the parts are cooled down before you remove them from the vise. We're just about out with the bearing, so we'll put a rag underneath the shock arm 
so the bearing and sockets don't fall on the floor. As you can see, using a socket in our vise worked to press out that lower bearing, but I like doing things the easy way. So now we'll show you how to use the Motion Pro tool. And to start out with that, we'll take our threaded rod and we'll put a little bit of grease on the end of the threads. Then we'll take one of the nuts that come in the kit, and put that on the end. And then we'll take one of these washers and drop it down. Next, we've got our bearing cup. So we'll put that on and we'll actually put this in the vise. Now we're ready to put our shock arm on. Next, we'll grab the correct size bearing driver. And in this case, it's the 20 millimeter. Now we can take a little more grease and put that onto the end of our rod. Install the washer and nut on top, and then we'll tighten that down until both bearings drop into the bearing cup. Again, we'll be applying some heat to make the job easier. After that, we'll remove both bearings from the threaded rod, and then we'll do the same thing on our next bearing. When we took those last bearings out, it left a bunch of dirt and rust all over this threaded shaft. So it's important to clean all that stuff off so you don't ruin your tool. So we got, went ahead and did that. And now we'll put some new grease and assemble everything the same way we did before. Again, we'll make sure everything's aligned before we start tightening. Our shock arm is now ready to be cleaned up and we'll move on to our shock link. To remove these shock link bearings, we'll have to use a blind side bearing puller. And to do that, the Motion Pro tool actually comes with that. So to hook it up, we'll start by tightening the blind side bearing puller to the bearing. And then we'll attach our adapter and thread our rod into it and we'll use our nut to pull the bearing out. And just like before, we'll add some grease to the threaded rod. To make this easier, we'll put the shock link into the vise with soft jaws. Now for the other side, we could use the Motion Pro tool again, but since we want to show another option, if you have a blind side bearing puller, you can use that too. Now, something I wanna point out is that it's a good idea to leave these needle bearings inside the cage while you remove it from the shock link. Leaving these in will help support the cage and that way you'll get a good bite with your bearing puller. We don't really need to worry about our bearings coming out, they're rusted in place. But if your needle bearings fell out, it's a good idea to use some grease and stick them back in place and that will help with the removal process. With all of our bearings removed, we'll now clean up our shock arm and shock link, and we won't worry about any of the other parts because we won't be reusing them. They're obviously all in pretty rough shape for our machine. So we'll go ahead and get that cleaned up and show you how to put the new parts in. Since our bores were so rusty, we're using a little bit of Scotch-Brite to help clean them up. Now that we've cleaned our parts and inspected them for damage, We'll take our Pivotworks bearings and lay everything out in order. And we'll show you how to install a couple bearings with our Motion Pro tool, as well as with the vise. Keep in mind while you organize everything, that the reason why we laid everything out in order when we took it apart is so we could reassemble in the exact same way. So if you do get something screwed up, the shock bearing, the lower shock bearing is a little bit smaller bearing than the rest and all of the other bearings are the same size. What will be different is the different size collars. We'll first install the bearings to our shock link using the Motion Pro tool. And how we'll do that is we'll take our bearing cup and we'll have the open side facing out 
Then we'll take our bearing driver and we'll insert our bearing onto it with the markings facing down the fatter side. So when, when it's actually installed, you want the markings facing out on our shock link. One of the cool things about this bearing driver is that it keeps all of the needle bearings in place while you're installing the bearing. So with that on there, we'll go ahead and take some of the grease that came in our kit and apply a thin film of grease around the outer race or the cage of the bearing. And then we'll also apply a little bit of grease inside our shock link. Next, we'll take our threaded rod and we'll apply a little bit of grease to both sides of the thread. And we'll insert this through our tool and bearing. And then we'll put the washers and nuts on the end. Now we'll get everything tightened up and we'll square everything. And then we'll continue tightening until the bearing driver seats all the way on the shock link. Now we'll remove the tool and check that our bearing is seated all the way in the shock link. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side, but be really careful to not knock any of these bearings out of place. With both bearings installed, we'll now double check to make sure all the needle bearings are in place and we'll grease those up, grease our pivot collar, install the seals with fresh grease on both sides of those, install the seals with the manufacturer's mark facing out. To install the seals, we'll just use the back of the bearing cup and we'll also grease up these new side collars and insert them. The first bearings we'll take care of on the shock arm are the swing arm side bearings. And we'll do that with our Motion Pro tool. Since we're still using the Motion Pro tool, we'll do the same procedures as we did with the shock link. Once again, we'll repeat the same process on the other side. Now we'll just grease these up and as well as the collar and slide it in. Again, we'll install our seals with the manufacturer's marks facing out and then install the side collars. Now for the shock link bearings, we'll show you how to use the sockets and the vise to install them. When you do this, be careful to make sure everything is going in square. Make sure the socket you're using goes inside the shock arm and sits nicely against the step just inside. Now we'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. When we install the pivot collar for the shock link side, it will be a little different after that because we'll be adding the washers to each side and then installing the seals and collars. Now we'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Now we're ready to install our lower shock bearing. And again, remember the lower shock bearing, all the parts will be different for this particular bearing. Again, go slow and make sure everything goes in square. With our bearing pretty close, we'll push it the rest of the way in with a socket and we'll want to center it in the shock arm. And that's pretty close to center right there. So we'll go ahead, we'll install our seals and the side collars. Don't forget to install the pivot collar before capping off the other end. And that's all there is to replacing your shock linkage bearings. As you can see, the Motion Pro tool makes this job a lot easier. Now, this tool along with the bearing kit are available on our website, along with just about anything you could want for your bike. So be sure to check that out.
And if you like this video and want to see more like it, check out our YouTube channel and subscribe. Thanks for watching.